This is question two from Atoms, Photons and Nuclei Level 3 Physics. Uh, the 2012 paper, sodium lamps. Low pressure sodium lamps are used widely in street lighting. The lamps produce light when an electric current is passed through sodium vapour. Uh, almost all the light from these lamps has a wavelength of 5.89 times 10 to the minus 7 metres. That's uh, 589 nanometres, I believe. Um, calculate the energy of a photon of light emitted from a sodium lamp. So uh, the energy of a photon of light is given by H, Planck's constant, times the frequency. If you don't have the frequency, you can use a V equals F lambda to find the frequency from the wavelength. That's what we have. We have the wavelength. Uh, so we have the wavelength, V is the speed of light, C, um, and F is what's unknown. So we would rearrange this formula to go E equals H, C over the wavelength. H, C over the wavelength. And that gives you something like 3.38 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Um, there we go. Uh, B, the work function of, of sodium is 2.28 electron volts. Calculate the threshold frequency for the emission of photoelectrons from the surface of the sodium metal and hence the maximum wavelength of light that can cause photoemission. I'll just move up so we've got some space to work there. Um, so the work function is 2.28 electron volts. If we want that in uh, joules, which we're going to have to for the calculation, it's going to be 2.28 times by 1 electron volt, which is uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Oops, 19 G. I don't know why you go to G from joules, but 10 to the minus 19. And that'll give you whatever the threshold frequency is um, in joules. And then Excuse me, we're, what are we doing? Calculating the threshold frequency. Um, so on your graph um, of uh, a kinetic energy of emitted electrons uh, versus frequency, your threshold frequency is here, if naught. Um, and, <coughs> excuse me, so we're looking for the point where the kinetic energy um, is zero for the released um, uh, electron, which kind of means it's not really released, it just tries to release but doesn't quite, but if you gave it a wee bit more it would be released, if you gave it a wee bit less it wouldn't get to the surface of the, um, the metal to escape. Um, so in any case, what you need is, um, the, the if the kinetic energy is zero, that's going to be the energy of the frequency of light minus the energy required to release it from the metal. So we're after the threshold frequency for the emission of photoelectrons from the surface of sodium metal, and that'll be this frequency here. And then from that, we can work out the maximum wavelength of light that can cause photoemission from V equals F lambda with, again, V uh, equaling to the speed of light. Um, F lambda. So you'd rearrange for lambda this time because we're trying to find lambda. And you would find... Where are we? Um... 5.45 times 10 to the minus 7 uh, meters. So let's just write that down. 5.45 times 10 to the minus 7 meters is your wavelength of light. Um, so that's the solution there. Um, that's useful later on. Uh, C, show that the light from a sodium lamp cannot cause photoemission of electrons from sodium metal. By considering the energy transitions involved in light production and absorption, suggest a possible reason for this. Okay, so the main thing here is, I mean, we can we can look up and uh, and see um, the wavelength of light um, for uh, the minimum. Let's see, the thing we just calculated previously, the threshold frequency, the wavelength of light at that frequency is 545 nanometers, and the wavelength of light, if we go way back up to the top for uh, sodium lamps is 5.89, which is 589 nanometers. So um, remember from E equals HF or E equals HC over lambda, the higher the wavelength, the lower the energy. Okay, Because the higher the wavelength uh, is the lower the frequency, and the lower the frequency, the lower the energy. So um, one, one way of looking at it is um, the frequency um, of, of the light produced is lower than the threshold frequency. Um, or, 
maybe it's better to say because the threshold frequency um, is going to produce a wavelength of light of 5.45. Yeah, no, that's right, that's right. So the, the frequency is lower. That's because the, um, the wavelength of the threshold frequency is, uh, let's do it the other way, the wavelength of light for sodium is, is greater than the threshold frequency, the threshold wavelength. Oh dear, excuse me for that. A um, little bit messy, but um, let's look at it. That's, that's looking at mathematically. If we look at it qualitatively, um, we can see that if a sodium uh, a, 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 a electron drops down and emits a photon of light, the energy of that photon has, has got to be equivalent to the energy gained by the electron when it's raised up or the energy get lost by the electron as it goes down. But if you then go to another sodium atom, you're trying to get this photon of light that's, that's come in. I'll redraw it down here. So that photon's coming in and it's trying to get an electron to raise up beyond the same level uh, that it was produced at. So over here, you've got electrons dropped down an energy level, given off a photon and made an electron jump up but it can't give more energy than it originally had. So you're not going to be able to use uh, light that's given off from uh, sodium to make, uh, uh, to make electrons disappear from sodium because the electron didn't have enough energy in the first place that produced the light that's trying to knock that one free. Okay, it's conservation of energy. Moving on, D. In 1802, William Wollaston noticed the appearance of dark lines in the spectrum of sunlight. These lines are due to the presence of certain chemical elements and gases surrounding the sun. Explain why sharp lines appear only at specific wavelengths. Uh, sharp dark lines appear only at specific wavelengths. Well, this is the absorption spectrum. Absorption. You'd think it would have a B, but it's a P. Absorption uh, spectrum. So the gases surrounding the sun, so that's the sun, and these are the gases surrounding it, um, as the light is given off um, by the sun and uh, that light hits those gases, that light has got enough energy um, to make the electrons jump up energy levels um, and that gets rid of the visible light at those, um, at those spectrums. So if you are watching it from the other side or if you saw it projected on a screen, you would see um, gaps where there were uh, light frequencies missing that excited electrons and jumped them up. Now, that's just the rough answer. There's actually a little bit more detail because um, these electrons that are raised up will fall down again and they will re-emit photons. But this time, they're going to emit them in many different directions, not just in uh, the same direction that the original photon was traveling in. So that's why you see those dark gaps in between. It's not because there's necessarily no, uh, it's not necessarily because there's no light of that wavelength or that frequency getting there. It's just that it's so much dimmer compared to the ones that are not absorbed by the gas. Okay, you might have to replay that and watch that one again if you're not sure still. Part two, explain how a comparison between the spectrum of sunlight with the dark lines, okay, and no, we won't do that, and the spectrum of light from a sodium lamp can identify that sodium is one of the elements in the sun's atmosphere. Okay, if we just compare them, if this is, say, the sodium spectrum, okay, just rough it, I don't think that is, but I'm just... Um, I'm just saying, if that's a sodium spectrum, and if we look at the spectrum from the sun, um, we, can, we can see, we might have the sun has all of this, and then a gap, and then two, three, and then this, and then this. Depending on what the question's asking, um, we could just say that the spectrum uh, in sodium is also in the sun uh, spectrum. So as long as that spectrum is contained. Um, so if you see those lines matching up, even if you don't, um, have uh, if you've got other ones like there might be um, sort of you know other colours in here as well and and all sorts, but you would just check to see if they're the same. However, um, one of the, the what I think the previous question is implying or or maybe even being clear about, but I'm just not being clear, <laughs> is that uh, the sun has got these uh, these gaps, so it might have a gap 
um, where these other parts are. And what we would want to know uh, is if the sun actually produces that light, um, how can we know that it produces that light if we're seeing gaps where the sodium light is? And the answers would be um, that we play the sodium light next to it and wherever you see it, um, exactly uh, mirrored, but just the negative, that is with just the dark uh, bits, then you can tell that there is something being absorbed there if you've got everything else uh, in the sun, in the spectrum of the sun. So if you've got all the white light from the sun and uh, everything else is there except for a very clearly defined anti-sodium spectrum that tells you that the sodium um, light is produced in the sun but it's being absorbed somewhere along the way by perhaps the sodium gas that's uh, surrounding the sun or equivalent energy levels, but yeah, that's another story. There you go.